Hey everybody, welcome to another Photoshop CS6 tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're gonna keep on working on editing faces with uh, different tools. And this time we're gonna work with the spot healing brush. And the spot healing brush, you may think is a lot like the healing brush and may have the same features. And you would be correct if you thought that. So that's cool, good job guys. And um, the, the but there is a uh, big difference between the two, two or two tools, in in that the uh, spot healing brush you don't have to take a sample of the area you want to uh, correct or uh, restore or whatever. It's going to you're just going to brush on and it's going to take the surrounding pixels. And uh, we're also going to improve a little bit on um, our last uh, um, image. Um, in that to make it look a little more realistic and keep some of the features that make the person who they are and in the last tutorial what we did was we ended up merging these two and um, we completely got rid of the uh, face facial features underneath the eyes now what if your client doesn't want you to completely get rid of these so how do you do that I'll show you that as well in this tutorial so let's first start with the spot healing brush. So it's over here and it's um, the first one on the top. It's the band-aid with the little dotted line around it. Now let's go ahead and select our top layer. And um, what the client wants is for these uh, laugh lines to be a little uh, less, or not the laugh lines, these face lines here, to be a little less and to get rid of some of these wrinkles on the side. These, uh, I think these are called laugh lines. So make sure you have your brush on a so as a soft brush. So something like 10% is good. And then, of course, you can adjust the size to whatever you need. You don't want to make it too big or too small because then it won't work. So what we're going to do is just click and drag. You can see it makes like a black image there. And let go. And you can see we've taken some of the uh, stuff out. You can go ahead and do this on the side again, and that one didn't work too well. Let's see if we can do it again. The nose there, so I have to make this a little smaller. Use my bracket keys to make this a little smaller. There we go. And they're going to start looking weird because they're going to lose all their facial features. So you have to do this a few times and mess with it because you're going to get some of the... Uh, other stuff blending in. There we go. You're gonna get like like you saw how like the lips were blending in and everything like that. You don't want that. So we got some here. Get rid of that stuff. Now, now I was talking about the client doesn't want everything all blended out. Um, so now if you keep on doing this, the face might start looking a little like a mannequin or some or a mime or something like that or a mannequin. Yeah with no real fa facial features. So what we're gonna do now is um, we can go ahead and blur uh, this a little bit. You can't really see much happening, but it, the stuff is actually happening. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lower the opacity here so we can add some of those fa facial, or facial features back in. Now you, if I lower it all the way, you can see they're coming back in and then let me just not lower it all the way so some there's 75 percent ish right there and uh that's how you bring those in so let me check out the uh um top up here on the options and see what we've got we have the different types here these right here to the left are blending modes um, we have different types for the spot healing brush brush proximity match create texture and content aware now content aware is the best in my opinion because it's uh, more intelligently chooses how uh, to replace and to uh, blend in the textures here um, proximity match was available before CS5 so in CS4 and before so pretty much it's the inferior version of content aware now it still works fairly decently but I would always use content aware if I were you now we have sample all layers now why would you want to use sample all layers now I can show you that really quick 
So what we're going to do is turn off that layer and I'm just going to create a new layer and it's going to be empty. So I'm going to click on sample all layers now. Now with that on, I can sample the background layer while not having any more information than I really need in uh, the top layer. So if I just go like this, you can see, oh, well, obviously I went like way too close and everything, but let's try something else that's a little bit easier. My brush is pretty probably too big. Yeah, brush is probably too, is too big. Make that smaller. But as you can see, I'm able to sample from the picture on, on a layer that isn't, um, on a layer that isn't, doesn't have any information in it besides transparency. And then I'm now adding these new uh, parts into this layer. And that way you don't take as much out in your, or you don't take as much RAM and everything and you make, you keep your file size down. So that's a, a one reason you would want to use the sample all layers. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to take that out because I did a fairly shitty job when I was doing that. I was just trying to show you really quick, but, um, like I, uh, like I showed you before, you just want to like, maybe like bring down opacity and everything when you're uh, combining your layers so that you can bring in some of the features that, uh, define who the person, what the person really looks like. You don't want to like completely blow out all their features unless they really ask you to. So maybe they really hate the bags under their eyes and want them completely gone. Then that's when you would do something like that. So that's it for this tutorial with the uh, spot healing brush. It's good for also for things like acne or blemishes because you can get them in just one click sometimes if you have your br make your brush just as big as they are and then click it'll take it away pretty good. I like it a lot and I use it on that all the time. So thanks for watching this tutorial and experiment with ways to how to use your spot healing brush to uh, clean up people's skin and other imperfections and images. Thanks a lot guys. Have a good one.